fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. In the early days of the western United States, the masked rider of the plains fought crime and criminals throughout the new territory. But justice meant more to him than the letter of the law. His strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness were always at the service of the man who deserved a second chance. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on! We're heading for Coronado. There's going to be trouble. Hello, Silver. Away. Hugging the ground, Sheriff Bob Landis of Coronado County worked his way cautiously toward the crest of a small rise. The tall grass hid him from sight. His right hand clutched a rifle, and as he reached his goal, he raised his head just enough to see the camp that lay in the hollow below him. Three men were there. One was masked, one was an Indian. But the third was partially concealed by the first two, and it was impossible for Landis to identify him. The sheriff brought his rifle to his shoulder before he called out, Don't move down there! Just reach, Pronto! That's you, Sheriff? Expect me? I thought you'd be alone. <laughs> I'll bet you did. Now cut the palaver. I got you and your parts covered. I'm getting up and coming down there. The first one to slap leather, I'll feel so full of lead, it'll take four men and a mule to carry him to Boot Hill. Stay where you are. Shut up. I'm warning you, Landis. Don't. Why, blast your hide Oh, my hand. You're not hurt. Don't move a step closer. You. Take a look at us. Did Tato and I look like the men you're after? You're in their camp. Because we found it before you did. Who's that other hombre? The one you're hiding. That's something you'd better not know. What? And if you want the fellows who held up the stage, you'll find them in that old line cabin at the head of the valley. They're waiting for you there, roped and tied. Huh? As Tonto and I left them. As you left them? Right. For me? Right again. I, I don't get this. You mean to stand there and say you've captured them stage robbers and tied them up in that there cabin for me to get? You'll find them there. Say... You and the Redskin must be the fellers the stage driver said he talked to right after the holdup. We are. Well, I'll be switched. I... Didn't I tell you to stay back? <laughs> you won't shoot. You ain't fooling me none at all, I Mr. Told you. Lone Ranger. How did you know who I am? The driver told me he thought it was you. I reckon if you've got them skunks hogtied like you say, then there ain't no doubt of it. Now, who's this other gent? Step aside so I can get a look at him, won't you? One moment, Sheriff. Yeah? How many men did the driver tell you took part in the holdup? Oh, why, why, four. Three laid for the stage at the bend and robbed it. The fourth waited off a ways with their horses. The three men who performed the actual robbery you'll find in the cabin with the loot. The three men? Then, then this fellow... Is the fourth, but you're not taking him in. Oh, well, look here. Once more, you're not even going to learn his identity. What's the ID? I think it best. Take my word for it, Sheriff. I know what I'm doing. 
you insist on seeing him, you'll regret it. Why? I can't explain. He a friend of yours? He was, years ago. A crook? He wasn't an outlaw then. But the... Do as I've told you. Go back to your horse. Pick up the men we captured for you. Leave well enough alone. Well, if that's the way it has to be, why it has to, I reckon. Right. But blast me if I'll stand for it. Get aside, I'll... You. I told you to leave well enough alone, Sheriff. But you wouldn't have it that way. Baldy Judson. Hello, Bob. Funny way for us to meet again, ain't it? You. A crook. Yes, so. I... Why, gosh, Baldy... I wouldn't have had this happen for a million dollars. Shucks, Bob. Don't you feel bad? Tain't your fault. But, uh... You but... understand what this means, Sheriff? Stranger, how did you know Baldy was the best friend I ever had in the world? I told you I'd known him before. Baldy, it's... It's been 20 years. Mm, thereabouts. And now, Sheriff, if you jail those fellows in the cabin, you'll have to jail Baldy as well. <laughs> Sheriff Landis was too bewildered by the abrupt turn of events to decide on a course of action. It was not until old Baldy Judson had told his story that he began to understand. There weren't nothing particularly strange about it. Just drifted into the camp one day and got to talking after we did. When they found out how things was, they said they could use me. And me? Well, I'd missed enough meals, so I was just about at the point where I'd have done anything. Baldy... You give me the first job I ever had. You took and made a top hand out of a kid so puny and gaunt, he looked like a snake on stilts. You made a rut into something you could mistake for a man. And now... And now I find you like this. <laughs> Quite a come down, eh? Turn crooked. Shucks, Bob, that's putting it a mite strong. I never done any of the actual dirty work. He's cooked for him wrangle their horses and run errands while they was hiding out. I wasn't ever an out-and-out highwayman. <laughs> Just a kind of handyman. I don't know what to do. I... If you listened to me in the first place, Sheriff, you could have gone back and truthfully said you'd never seen Baldy. I know. Now, if you take in those other fellows, they're going to implicate Baldy. And you're not going to be able to deny you had a chance to arrest him. Or are you going to arrest Baldy? Baldy? Well, I couldn't do that no matter what he'd done. Shucks, Bob, if it's your duty... No, wait. But if it's... There your... is a way out of this. There is what? Turk and Mace and Slash are wanted in Nevada. If it leaves your conscience any, Tonto and I can take them there. Would you? Yes. There's just one objection. What's that? They have influence in that section. Mace is related to people who carry weight there. So is Turk. That's where all three came from originally. Uh -huh. I know they'd never get the rope they deserve. They'd most likely receive a jail sentence. A pardon before half their term had been served. I see. So that's your choice. Either let me take them back where they'll get off easy, or arrest them yourself, hold them until they're sentenced to be hanged, and see Baldy punished with them. I can't. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't ever be wearing a badge. But I don't care what's happened. Baldy ain't no crook. And I'd rather see one fellow like him go loose than a dozen like Turk hanged. I agree with you. But there's one thing more. Hmm? Huh? What's to become of Baldy if he does go free? He's no more capable of finding employment now than he was before. Do you intend to let him drift until something like this happens again? Baldy, look here. Yeah, Bob? I ain't going to ask you to come and live with me and Mary, because I know you'd call it charity and turn it down. But I'd have to. But if I get a job for you, a job where you'd have to be trusted, would you... Sure. What in blazes am I talking about? I know doggone well I could trust you. I ain't one to make promises, but... You could. Then I know the job you could handle, and I'll see that you get it. Stranger? Yes? You take care of them other fellas? I will. Then I'm trusting you, too. <laughs> but knowing who you are, I reckon I ain't taking no big chances. That your horse, Baldy? Uh-huh. Get him, and we'll get back to where I left mine. Adios. Goodbye, stranger. Goodbye, Baldy. Goodbye, Sheriff. Down the cold, Scout. Uh, here's Scout. Here's Silver. We'll take those fellows to the law in Nevada, as we promised, Kimasabi. No. But when we turn them over to the law, we're not letting it go with that. Uh -huh. What we do? Sooner or later, they'll be out again. And once out, they'll be up to their old tricks once more. Isn't that right? And the next time, there won't be a situation like this to save them. How do they'll hang? Isn't that good. Come on, Silver. Get them up, Silver. Silver, Silver away! <laughs> The Lone Ranger delivered his three prisoners to the authorities in Nevada. But only four months later, the jail doors opened and Turk, Mace, and Slice walked out. 
Once more, free men. A week later, in a hidden camp in the hills, Turk and Slash waited for Mace. Turk, there's Mace now. Yeah, better get things ready for traveling, Slash. If he's bringing the right news, we'll be on our way. Oh, take a look. What do you think I was doing while you were sleeping? Horses saddled, bedrolls lashed on, and all set to go. Yeah, good for you. Hi there, Mace. Any luck? Fellas, that hombre we talked to in jail wasn't stretching it none at all. Yeah? How'd you find out? Hunted up one of Pete Clemson's waddies I knew come from down that way. Old Baldy's in Coronado, all right. Just sitting atop of the world. Working for the bank? Uh-huh. Kind of a shotgun guard. Sits behind the door with a shotgun crossed his knees waiting for bank robbers. Well, talk on, <laughs> the skunk. We go to jail and he gets a job. Shucks, I knew doggone well the old idiot would turn straight if he got the chance. He never had no more use for us than he had for poison. The sheriff got him a job, huh? That's what they say. Uh, I'm just wondering. What about? I'm wondering whether or not the sheriff knew Baldy had been traveling with us. Why, shucks, he, he couldn't have. Don't stand a reason. No? Well, does it? I don't know. Like I said, I'm just wondering. I always did think it was kind of funny the mask fell and that engine brought us clear back here when they knew it was us that robbed the Coronado stage. What do you mean, Turk? I mean, I figure Baldy was altogether too friendly with the law back there. Yeah, but I don't... Why couldn't his tipping off the law been what got us caught? Well, the law didn't catch us. The masked hombre did. And his sheriff could have been in cahoots, couldn't they? Sure, but I don't see why. The idiot. The answer's right in front of your nose. The sheriff couldn't show in the deal. If he did, he'd have had to take us in. And if he'd done that... He knew doggone well we'd fix a squealer that sold us out. You mean you figure Baldy got that job because he turned us in? And the masked fella brought us back here so as we couldn't queer their game? That's just what I mean. Oh, it makes sense, Mace. If Baldy done that, why... He's going to be plenty sorry. Come on, we're all set. Get to the saddle. We're heading for Coronado? Right. And if Baldy's as friendly with the sheriff as we hear he is, he's going to find himself in a tight spot where even the law can't help him. You ready, fellas? Right. All right. Then let's go. Get up there. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Two more weeks went by. And then one evening at Coronado, old Baldy Judson entered the office of his friend, Sheriff Bob Landerson. Evening, Bob. Well, Baldy, howdy. Thought you'd be here before long. Here. Sit down. Thanks. So gone if I ain't tired. <laughs> Have a hard day? Oh, a little harder than usual, I reckon. Lugged quite a bit of cash over from the express office in the afternoon. Payroll for the mines. Took quite a while. Uh, satisfied, are you? Huh? Yeah? I mean working for wages don't bother you none, does it? Bob, you look at here. Honest work should never bother nobody. I'm just plenty glad to have it and plenty grateful to you for getting it for me. But I, I don't like what I'm doing to you. I'm doing to me? What are you talking about? Shucks, you can guess. What if somebody in town found out I was crooked for a while? Then what had happened? What had happened when folks learned the sheriff got a crook a job in the bank? You'd be out of office so fast you'd never catch your breath. I don't know talking about that. Well, can't help wishing. Wishing what? Well, that you could have told the truth about me when you fixed me up. <laughs> I told the truth, didn't I? Well, the uh, whole truth, then. Do you think you'd be working now if I had? Mm, maybe not. Of course you wouldn't. What? what? Hey, Baldy, what's the matter? Gosh, for just a second there. Uh huh. Bob, how long a stretch did them skunks I was teamed up with get in the valley? Uh, how long? Well, what's your... Quick! Idea? You said you wrote to find out, didn't you? Yeah, but... Then what was it? Why, two years. What's upset you? Uh, uh, huh? What was it? Your eyes were bugging out fur enough to hang pegs on. I was just seeing things that couldn't be so. Yeah? There was a face looking in the window right behind you for a second. A face? What? Dog is... gone if it didn't give me a scare. I thought it was Turks. <laughs> Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Thank you.
Now to continue our story. Old Baldy was right. It had been Turk's face that he had seen at the window. The outlaw, having proved his suspicions, returned to a camp outside of town. But as he and his two companions sat around a small fire, they were unaware that two horsemen were watching them and... So they returned to Coronado, Tonto. Uh. I didn't expect this. With that stage robbery still hanging over them, I thought they'd stay clear of the place. I wonder what they're up to. Mm, me not know. They heard about Boldy. That might have brought them. Uh-huh. At any rate, no honest reason brought them here. We can be sure of that. I'm sorry, Boldy and the sheriff must be protected. If it went for them, we could pick up these fellows and take them in. Mm, that'd be bad. But then the entire story would come out. Everyone in town would know the sheriff had befriended an outlaw. And this would most likely find himself out of office. Uh. Well, the one thing we can do is to watch these fellows. They're here for something, that's certain. One of these days, they'll make their play. Mm. We'll be on hand to make ours. Well, we've located them. Now back to camp. Come on, get him up, Scott. Easy, old fellow. Easy. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the outlaw's camp, Turk reported what he had seen. I tell you, I seen him. Chummy as fleas on a dog. You don't need to tell me nothing. If Bolly didn't sell us out that time, then I'm a siwash. Well, what'll we do? Got any ideas, Turk? Slash, I got plenty. Hmm? And I heard plenty while I was in town. For instance? This is Thursday. The first of the month comes Saturday. And the first is when them hombres come in from the mines to cash their paychecks. Huh? Between now and Saturday, the payroll's in the bank. Come in by express today. You mean... Tomorrow we hold up the bank. That's where Baldy's working. Just so. But by the time we're finished, we'll be gone with a payroll and Baldy will be behind bars. Yeah? Now listen, we got to plan this out. Early in the morning on the following day, just a few minutes after the bank in town had opened its doors to the public, Banker Sims stopped for a moment beside old Baldy and... Baldy? Yeah, Mr. Sims? I want you to keep specially close watch on everyone who comes in here today. As you know, we have more cash on hand than usual. Oh, sure. Would have anyhow. Good. I'll Excuse go over... Excuse me, will you, Mr. Sims? You're blocking my view of the door. Can't see who comes in. Oh, of course. Please, Please mister. mister. What the... Turk! Recognize you, old partner. <laughs> well, you can drop that shotgun. You're too late to do anything. This is a hold-up, folks. Don't nobody move. Hey, Slash, the safe's open. Clean it out. I'll stay here and keep watch. All right. We won't miss a dog. Why, you are... <laughs> Don't get so red in the face, friend. You bust a blood vest. This is an outrage. Sure is, ain't it? Carl, you get... do nothing but shut up. Oh, well, Baldy... This is like old times meeting up with you again. <laughs> Reminds me of the time you were still our pard and helped us hold up the corn out of stage. You, you rotten skunk. What did you say about that stage hold up? Oh, did I say something I shouldn't have? Come on, <laughs> Baldy, you mean to sit there and just the same as admit you never told a banker here you was a crook at one time? You'll <laughs> pay for this, Turk. <laughs> is this man telling the truth? Hi. <laughs> Answer me. Why, shucks. If Bolly don't want to talk up, well, ask the sheriff. He knows all about Bolly and us being pards once. If he's got the gumption to admit it's Bolly, oh, you wait. mean... I... Wait, Mr. Sims. Come on, Turk, oh. we're finished. Let's hightail. Ready, Slash? Yeah. Let's go. Don't anybody move for five minutes. Mr. Sims, hey, the safe. Hey, they took everything, thousands in gold. Go for the sheriff. Yes, Mr. Sims. So you came here and let me give you a position of trust without telling me the facts about yourself. Hi. I... You've been a crook. Please... Mr. You Sims. were in with those fellows once, and maybe you were again today. No, I, I wasn't honest. I just didn't see them come in. Was that man telling a straight story? Is it true Sheriff Landis knew about you when he recommended you to me? I, I ain't got nothing to say. Talk up. Please. Yeah, that's true, Mr. Sims. Sheriff, uh-huh. you dare to admit it. I've done nothing to be ashamed of. Neither is Baldy. He's as honest as you are. Maybe you were in this robbery together. Why, are you... Well, I'm still the mayor of this town... Here, give me that badge. Deputy. Yeah, Mr. Sims? Take this badge. What do you mean? You're the law in this town now. Arrest Baldy. 
Put him behind bars and charge him with complicity in the holdup of the Coronado stage. Sheriff Landis went with old Baldy as the deputy escorted him to jail. Baldy himself seemed less concerned over what would happen to him than he was over the tragedy he had brought into the life of his friend. Bob, I knew you'd get nothing but trouble for helping a worthless old has-been like me. I knew it. I wish you'd never had the bad luck to meet up with me again. Don't talk like that, Baldy. I'm sorry. I know I done right. Uh Uh-huh. You make it easy for Baldy in jail, won't you? Sure I will. I hope you're sorry this ain't none of my doing. I'm just following orders. Of course. Come on, Baldy. Mm-hmm. Afraid I won't have much time to spend on you now. I'll have to get busy organizing the posse. Go on in. Don't close the door, Deputy. What, what the... Bob, it's that mask fella. The Lone Ranger. You go for that gun, Deputy. You won't have a chance. I ain't no fool. Baldy, Sheriff. Yeah? I've hidden silver around at the side. Where's your horse? Why, just out in front. Get in the saddle. I'll take Baldy with me. We'll make a break for it and get him out of town. But what don't do you... Don't argue. Just come along. And don't follow, Deputy. Bless you. Hi, stop them. Stop the Sheriff and the mask fella. They're taking a prisoner away. Oh, The masked man and the sheriff soon outrode all pursuit and, joined by Tonto, followed the trail of the bank robbers. Finally, the masked man reined in. Oh, oh, this old scout. All right, Baldy. Get in the saddle with the sheriff. You betcha. What are we going to do? I've explained to Baldy. He'll tell you as you ride. This is where Tonto and I leave you. But, uh, it's all right, Bob. The masked army knows what he's about. Let's go, Tonto. Uh, get him up, Stone. Come on, Silver. Come on. In the meantime, Turk, Mason, Slash for urging their horses to the limit of their speed. Get up! Get up! Get up! Come on! Get up! Get up. But suddenly... Hi, sir! Slash! What the hand? A white horse! And a paint! Same two horses rode by them fellas caught us the other time. Yeah, look at that! One of them's masked and the other's a red skin. But how'd they get ahead of us? Them critters of theirs could outrun anything. We gotta cut away from the trail. Head north! Hey! Right. Come, come on, boy! Get away from Come on! Although the three outlaws were too excited to be aware of the fact, the masked man and Tonto at no time made an attempt to overtake them, which on Silver and Scout they could easily have done. Instead, they forced the outlaws into a course the Lone Ranger had chosen ahead of time. Finally, Turk called out, Get in that canyon ahead, fellas. Trip up your horses. Once we're there, we'll be out of sight and we'll be able to give them the slip. Right? Get up there. Come on. Get up. Looking over their shoulders as they neared the mouth of the canyon, the outlaws noticed that the masked man and the Indian, instead of holding their own as formerly, were rapidly dropping behind. Just inside the canyon, Turk shouted a command to halt. Clean up, fellas! Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, fellas. I can't see the masked fellow no more. <laughs> Gave up the chase, I reckon. Found we was too much for him. What'll we do, Turk? Keep going to find a place uh, close by and rest the horses. Why, uh... You keep going, you cold cat. Turk, what the hell is that? town. Come on, boy. We knew you fellas would be along. Been waiting right here for you. What the... Go ahead and slap leather, Mace. I'd sure like to drill you. We're covered, Mace. Don't go loco. Glad you got sense. Now head back like I said. Get up. Shouts of astonishment met the cavalcade that filed into town a few hours later. In the lead, their holsters empty and their hands raised, were Turk, Mason, Slash. Behind them, watching their every move, came the sheriff and old Baldy, riding double on the sheriff's horse. 
As they halted in front of the sheriff's office and forced their prisoners to dismount, it seemed that every man, woman, and child in town was in the crowd that surrounded them. All right, you skunks, climb down. And get down without lowering your hands, too, dog gun you. Shut up, you old fool. Quiet there. Deputy. Gosh, where'd you go? As long as I ain't wearing a badge no more, reckon I've lost my right to jail anybody. So here they are. You jail them. You? You and Baldy caught these pole cats? We sure did, with the masked fella to help us. Yeah, what side? Let me through here. Hey, here comes Banker Sims. Look at his face. Well, what do you think of Baldy in the sheriff now, Sims? Still got the mayor for column crooks, have you? Well, you'd better start to do some tall apologizing. <laughs> That's what I mean to do. Sheriff, they tell me you captured these bank robbers. I'm not alone, I didn't. I mean, with Baldy's help, of course. Like, like I tried to say before... With the help of Tonto and the mask man. Yes. All he's telling it to you straight, Mr. Sims. We just threw down on these fellas. It was the mask man and his pard that herded them into the canyon where we could make the capture. But you and Baldy did make the capture. Well. And in spite of the way I accused you both, you not only returned these men, but the money as well. You got me all wrong, Mr. Sims. I ain't a crook. Maybe if you'd waited to hear the whole story, you'd have realized it. I, I made a mistake. I'm beginning to realize it now. Huh? Huh? What's that? I'm sorry for the accusations I made. And if you can forget them, uh, I'll be proud to have you working for me at the bank again. Bob, did you hear that? Did you? <laughs> I sure did, Baldy. They, they know about me now, and they're still willing to give me a chance. And you'll take back your badge, of course, Sheriff. Uh-huh. And me and Baldy are grateful to you. Oh, which I... won't keep us from remembering we owe the Lone Ranger most of all. Oh! The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>